Sorry, that was Stevie. I'm not Panos. He's a little shorter. Uh, <laughs> I gotta admit, I'm actually feeling a, feeling a little vulnerable. I uh, see last year, I had a bunch of really cool demos uh, to lean on. Uh, this year, Panos handed me a blank piece of paper and asked me uh, what I should write and say to this audience. And so I did. And I'm here, with no demos. <laughs> <laughs> so I have thoughts for you, and I think it's worthwhile. All right, everyone's already said this, but really, AI is bringing unprecedented change. And at times, I really do feel like I'm an intern all over again. And it can be daunting on where to start and even how to think about its impact on your apps. But here are three thoughts for you. First, between Windows, M365, and Azure ML, we're giving you the latest and most powerful tools to help. Pavan and Cassie just showed this to you. They showed the Onyx runtime, the Olive tool chain. Use them. Use them to compile, deploy, and run your AI efficiently across the most diverse ecosystem of devices on the planet. But it doesn't just stop there. Yesterday, Scott talked about new tooling that allows you to fine tune large models with techniques like LoRa with just one click. I mean, geez, taking something at the scale of GPT 3.5 and retraining it, making your own, that's, that's groundbreaking. Something that was so difficult just last year is now so easy. Second, contextualize every interaction. Earlier, Rajesh spoke about the importance of the person being at the center. One of the most powerful ways to do so is use the Microsoft 365 graph and its APIs to help ground the API and personalize every interaction, every prompt. This contextualization is a key differentiator that will enable you to go broad and deep with your customers. And third and finally, Panos just mentioned it. AI is the new interaction technology. But really, what does that mean? 50 years ago, the industry had a milestone event. Take a look at this demo with Doug Engelbart showing off the mouse and keyboard interaction. That impact, that impact of those innovations revolutionized application design. And amazingly, that application structure hasn't changed much since. It's wild. Until now. For the next 50 years, this direct, very explicit interaction model will be completely transformed by what's happening today. And we already see it. Our interfaces are transforming from being exact to being more implicit and fuzzier, less programmatic, more piloted. To seize this opportunity to build the next generation of apps and services, I want to take just a brief moment, because I got to catch a plane actually right after this, so, so just a brief moment, to share the patterns we're seeing and how people infuse AI into their experiences. Three new AI application structures are emerging, shaped by how AI functions relative to your application. Is the AI beside your app, inside, or outside? It's a simple frame to use alongside what Kevin Scott spoke yesterday. In the first application structure, the AI is beside your application, helping helping your tasks, being a helper. It's like a co-pilot. It is a co-pilot. It's very appropriate that the first types of significant AI experiences are co-pilots because it enables us to get in the game quickly. It keeps the original app architecture definition and is minimally disruptive to what our customers already know. Yet, this new application structure delivers immensely capable tools and experiences that did not exist before. We're excited for the new Windows Copilot and all the category-specific Copilots like M365, Bing, and even the ones you will create. Use them, write plugins, integrate with them. In the second application structure, the AI is inside as the main scaffolding of the app. It's the main input loop. Here, you use AI to completely redefine the application interaction model and even its purpose. The interaction model will be less dependent on point-and-click commands. Things will become much more automatic. We see glimpses already happening in applications like Designer, Klimchat, and Luminar Neo. 
that take pro-level skills and turn them into one-click, slider-driven intents and much more intuitive interactions, all without compromising the result. Here, there are fewer toolbars, fewer deep menus, simply because you don't need them. You want to just intuitively direct the app with what you're managing, and this task is accomplished for within the context of the application. And this brings us to the third and final application structure, where AI goes from executing from within the context of the application frame to AI being outside, executing globally. Here, the AI will orchestrate across multiple apps, plugins, and services, functioning more as an agent. This structure will bring code to the person rather than the person going to the code, allowing the agent to connect, orchestrate, and keep context across entire workflows, across devices, and even across vastly different time You see these ideas already emerging in agents and orchestrators like Microsoft Jarvis, Semantic Kernel, and the Bing Orchestrator. In fact, if you take a step back, the window shell itself is an orchestrator. In fact, maybe one of the most powerful orchestrators across apps, across content, across the graph. Imagine with AI and natural language, you start to see glimpses of the opportunity with the Windows Copilot. And it is here when you get intelligence that's functioning not at just the granular details, but at the higher levels, where you get a mixing of both tactics and strategy. You get both vision and execution. It's like a copilot of copilots, a very powerful application structure. And with the plugin models from Bing, Windows, and M365, we'll already start to see these outside structures emerging, and you can start creating them today. Each of these three new structures offers unique advantages and purposes. And with the solutions we're providing you, from our co-pilots to our plugins, from our foundational models to our AI runtimes, you can start building on one, if not all three, of the new AI application structures. With all the new amazing technologies and opportunities, I feel like I'm learning all over again. And maybe so are you. But Microsoft is here alongside you providing the easiest tools to build, the latest AI to delight, and the broadest platform to deliver those cutting edge experiences and revolutionary interaction models. Each of our solutions build on each other. This is so important for you to understand, each of them. So use the tools we're building for you to help you optimize and customize your AI for your applications. And that enables you to personalize and contextualize every interaction, which helps you reinvent your interaction model further enabled by embracing one of the three new AI application structures I just talked about, the side, inside, and outside. Look for ways to use AI and agents to achieve your customers' overall goals, not just their individual tasks. Doing so will make your work more intuitive, yet functional, more natural, yet powerful. All this to enable and reach and empower more people. With that, I would like to bring Panos back on stage to help us close it out. Stay with, stay with me. So on behalf of the entire Windows team, I hope you love what you saw today. What did you think? Rock. Just remember the Windows Copilot is that first high ambition AI workload for the client and remains at the center of the new AI, new AI app platform on Windows. We are grateful for your time. Thank you for all you do. Go change the world.